ask him uh, about Russia. And because I'm going to tell you, I went to Africa and listened to me. I would never say nothing bad about this country again. I would never say nothing bad about because uh, this place is amazing. And we might not think it, but this place is awesome. This country, I wish, and Miguel said this, he said, uh, uh, you know, he said, if I ever get married and have kids, I want them to go live in a third world country for two or three months and then they'd appreciate America. But I'm gonna ask him just to stand up just for a, a couple minutes and, uh, and uh, you know, I want him to just share a little bit about uh, Russia. He said his dad was a, a pastor and he was persecuted in the communist reign. And uh, so anyway, I'm going to ask him to come around and let's uh, just let him uh, testify a minute. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's on Jenny's mic, brother. Praise the Lord. She should be good. Amen. Praise God. All right. Amen. Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. 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 So, uh, my name is Brother Mikhail, and I come from Russia with love. Amen. So I was born in a wicked communist country. In 1920, uh, the people of Russia said, we don't want God. We want to do our own thing. And in 1920, before 1920, uh, Russia was called Holy Russia. My goodness. And it was mostly, mo mostly Christian over there. And then the communists came, and they said, we want to destroy everything, and we want to do our own thing. So in 1920, persecution started. People started to get persecuted for their faith. Churches got burned down. And in 1960, one of our presidents said, one day on TV, I'm going to show you the last Christian in Russia. My goodness. In 1960. Well, now that president is dead, yet there is hundreds and thousands of us today. Amen. Because God is faithful and we keep his saints. And my dad, my dad was a Christian pastor in a small village, uh, you know, in the 80s and the 90s. And, you know, they wanted to put my dad in jail. You know, they came to his church and said, hey, you got to pay us this, you got to pay us that. And my dad said, I ain't paying you nothing. And they said, oh, you're going to go to jail. 20, some people went to jail for about 25 years. And 25 years, my dad said, I, you know, I'm going to obey the Lord. I'm going to follow him. And so he stood up for faith, and he never ended up going to jail. But many persecutions happened to those people who stood up for the truth. You know, we don't see much persecution here in America today. And my dad, he went out witnessing wherever he could, you know, set up libraries. Uh, he bought a little building. One of his buildings got trashed and finally got burned down because people hated the truth. And, you know, looking back on today, looking back at America, and uh, I was talking with the pastor uh, yesterday, we had so much freedom here in America that we can compare to, compared to other countries where we can just go anywhere and preach God's truth and stand up, and we got to use this opportunity. Well, for the last thing, I want to say a little story. Uh, four people die, and they end up in heaven, and they're all standing there, you know, talking to each other, and one person says, well, how did you end up being here? And he said, well, you know, I heard Jesus Christ himself preach. And he said, you heard Jesus Christ preach? He's like, yes, I heard Jesus Christ himself preach. I became a Christian after he was crucified on the cross. And, you know, I just went everywhere in Jerusalem preaching the gospel. And he said, and what happened? Well, I was preaching, preaching everywhere, and the Romans got a hold of me, and they killed me right there. And another guy said, well, how did you get here? And he said, well, you know, I was... I heard, um, I heard Paul preach. He said, you heard Paul himself preach? He said, yes, I heard Paul preach, and I got born again, and I went out to the marketplace. I went everywhere the people were. I started witnessing to anybody, and in a short time, I got thrown in prison and executed. And the third guy says, well, how did you become a Christian? And he said, well, I was in Ethiopia, and this guy, a missionary, came uh, to our country, witnessed to us. And I got born again and started witnessing to all these people, started to go to all these tribes and witnessing to people in one of these tribes. They took me and uh, burned me alive and ate me. And they asked this fourth guy, he's like, well, where are you from? He said, oh, I'm from America. And these three people say, oh, we heard great things about America. It's the land of the free. That's the place where you can stand on the street corners, preach God's word, and people, uh, the police will protect you. You can go to the grocery market and witness to people. You can hand out tracts. You can go to the park, witness to people. Uh, what have you been, 
what have you been doing with your life? Well, and he's like, well, I live to be 90 years old. And they ask him, well, what did you do? And he said, well, I just went to church once a week and I was an usher sometimes. <laughs> you know? And that, and that just shows you we have so much opportunity here in America and we got to use that opportunity yeah. to stand up for the truth, stand up for righteousness. The Bible says in Psalm 94, who will rise up for me against the evildoers? We got to rise up as an individual, we got to rise up as a church, and we got to rise up as a nation to stand up for the truth and stand up for the gospel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. Amen. You never know. Praise the Lord. 